you are one of the mayoral candidates. Yes. Uh, first of all, can I call you Brad? Is yes, that okay? Yes, that's fine. <laughs> when did you decide to run for mayor? Probably a year and a half ago. I began to contemplate that and uh, I really started to look at our community from the perspective of a person that's always lived here. And I talked to a lot of people about our town and about where we are and, and where we need to go. And I, I really felt that our community really is, really needs, in order to push through some of the issues that we have with the economy and where we are, we need uh, real strong leadership, some, somebody that's going to be willing to make hard decisions in order to make it so that we can uh, be the community that we need to be. So, in addition to not minding those hard questions, you don't mind making hard decisions either? No, so I've, I'm a structural engineer and what I do on my job is I design schools and hospitals. And uh, many times we go out to the job site and there's errors that have been uh, either contractor error, my error, or errors of, of materials that we have to work with the contractor to get those fixed. And at the end of the day, it has to be right. It doesn't matter whether it costs me money, costs him money, or costs somebody else money. It has to be right because my job is to protect the public. That's my license is, is all about protecting the public. And so I'm used to that kind of, uh, of scrutiny and that kind of uh, making people pretty upset at times uh, over these things, but, but uh, developed quite a reputation actually in the structural engineering uh, world of being one that, you know, is, is willing to do what's required to make the project be best. Yeah, you were telling me and uh, just before the show came on that you're kind of used to people both recognizing you and kind of ridiculing you because you have to make those hard decisions sometimes. That's right. It's it's part of of the the profession that I've chosen is that uh, I I've always liked to fix things. I've always been an engineer at heart. My father was a uh, uh, a feed mill maintenance man at a feed mill and he taught I have three brothers and he taught us all just about everything as far as uh, mechanics and building things so it's been a I really enjoy that part of, of making things work in in my in my uh, field I basically start with a blank piece of paper with a with a an end goal in mind and then we we're, we're able to put together and create uh, what the structure looks like and how it's to be done to be able to meet the criteria that the, the uh, governing agencies place on us. Now you had mentioned your dad. You grew up here in Modesto, right? Yes, I did. And you went to, was it Mark Twain or? Franklin, Mark Twain, and then Modesto High. And then I uh, trans, well, I went to Modesto Junior College and then transferred to University of the Pacific to finish out my bachelor's. And uh, yeah, I grew up on Elm Street, which is between Kansas and Martin Luther King over there on I the west side. I know where that is, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's funny, I was driving down the road the other day to my mom's house. Uh, uh, it's been a couple years now, but I saw this little kid out there that had, you know, his hair was messed <laughs> up and his shirt was dirty and he was barefoot. And I thought, what's what's wrong with this guy's parents? But I thought that was that was me when I was growing yeah. up. So it's just part of the area of being able to run around and get yeah. dirty. Yeah. yeah, we had a great, great upbringing. Now you have strong roots here in Modesto. You grew up here. Uh, you raised a family here. You now have grandchildren. Yes. How many grandchildren do you have? I have three grandchildren. I have three brothers uh, who all live in the area and they've all their kids live in the area. And uh, my my children all live in Modesto, and uh, like you said, I have three uh, grandchildren. Now you said that you went to Modesto High. Yes. Um, how do you feel that the high school has changed over the years since you were there? Well, Modesto High has always been. Uh, in fact, my mother went to Modesto High back in you know in the probably the thirties, uh, but uh, it has always been the the hub school as far as the oldest school in town and, and even now a lot of the, the uh, advanced placement activities still occur at Modesto High School and uh, it just everything looks smaller now than when I was yes. younger but but it's it's a great place and it's a great high school and I'm proud to be uh, have gone there. Do you think that it has changed over the years? I mean mm -hmm. the 
the structure of it or the neighborhood maybe? Yeah, the neighborhood's definitely different. It's been a transition. I remember when I was growing up, there was, uh, uh, it's, it's always been a minority area and it's kind of the, the minority that's the newest is, is in that area and predominantly Hispanic now where it wasn't when I was growing up. Your mom went there, you went there, mm -hmm. uh, your brothers went yes. there? Is it, uh, did your children go there? No, they went to Downey because we live uh, by the junior college now. Is Modesto High the type of high school that you would want to see your grandchildren go to? Sure, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a proponent of, of public schools. I think that the key element is parental participation and that's what we did with our kids and, and uh, I was very pleased with the, the public school system. But again, it's the parental involvement in the family that makes that uh, be something that's that works. Well, speaking of family, uh, you've mentioned about family values and how your mom and dad gave you a very strong family structure when you were mm -hmm. growing up and how you have implemented that with your wife and have raised some really strong community people with your children and now your grandchildren. Tell me how those family values have influenced not only you in your own family, but how those values now can be transferred, if you will, to the community. Well, you know, to back up a little bit on when I began to think about running for mayor, I, I thought that we had this great community. We live in a great community. I, lo I love it here, my family loves it here, and, and a lot of people I know love it here, but we're also, you know, we're the, one of the best cities because of that, but also number one on a lot of bad lists. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so that was kind I'd of like... I'd like her to get off that list. <laughs> well, in my mind, I was thinking, how in the world can we be the best and the worst? Mm -hmm. So I, I talked to the mayor and, and he, uh, he and I got a group of community leaders together that were basically from seven different spheres of influence. It was education, uh, government, church, nonprofits, and and a couple of more. And what we did is we we met all day Saturday. It was it was a pretty amazing thing because it was a full Saturday and everybody that signed up came. There was 40 people that came and stayed the whole day. And, and essentially what they said is the way we need to what we need to do to help fix our issues in Modesto were to help families because they recognized that drugs, uh, drug abuse, teen pregnancy, gangs, c stolen cars, go down the list, you know, people not graduating from high school, those all relate to family. Do you think it all kind of comes back to the family structure? Is that what you're saying? Well, by family, I mean, I, uh, I'm not talking about the traditional leave it to beaver family it's okay. whoever's in in the position of the parent with the child so that could be a single mom could be a single dad could be you know any any form of of uh, a family because it's that's where the values of a child get placed in into their minds and their hearts and I, you know i was reflecting a couple of weeks ago about how how little what little influence peer pressure and being out in the public school system had on my kids, how little, what little influence that that had because we had strong family, a strong family that, that values and principles were built in the family and then they were uh, exercised out, out as they were out in the world. And so that's what's driven me to look at how can we help as a community? How can, the, how can government provide an atmosphere so that families can flourish? And that's where these values and principles that you mentioned have come up. We're working with the Modesto City Schools. We did a pilot program this summer in, uh, in Orville Wright School in introducing values and principles and trying to get them home so that it's a family um, activity as opposed to just a child activity mm -hmm. and so we're working on new curriculum for next year this coming year for uh, to incorporate uh, family family values and uh, the interesting thing is is we're not asking the teachers to to do another thing what we're asking is for volunteers to come in and, and augment what the teacher does so the teacher because I kind of figured out that our our culture has asked the school system to raise our children 
It's been pretty tough on the teachers. It has been, and so yeah. my my goal is if we can if we can relieve them of some of that pressure and let them be teachers and and let volunteers from the community come in and help and there's there's already a lot of great things going on so this is this is not earth shattering in the, in one sense but it is collectively coming together to to help the community so that we can uh, instill family values into people's lives well if you have the volunteers come in to the classroom and help with the kids and and teach them these values values and principles will that go one step further to give volunteers the chance to help the families within their home yes that's that's what we're writing is a curriculum right now that is related to health if you eat well sleep and do your homework you're probably going to do pretty well in what school. was that ben franklin said that yes <laughs> And we're relating that, which is a very uh, uh, easy concept, mm -hmm. to an abstract concept that if you, like honesty, if you're honest and you always tell the truth, oh. your life is going to go a certain way. Tell them about your plumb line. Because oh. you're an engineer, and when you were telling me that the other day, it was just fascinating. Doing home construction, I have plumb lines every now and yeah. then. But tell them about that. Well, that the, was... the plumb line is, is people need to have in their lives uh, a plumb line to be able to to bounce their when a decision has to be made should I do this or should I do that they need a plumb line that will give them the ability to make a decision and that's what that's what uh, these values and principles are they're principles that work for you or against you if you lie and cheat and steal you're probably going to be in jail or go this way if you're honest and you work and you work diligently you're probably going to do better in life, mm -hmm. and so it's it's the principles are they're going to work for you or against you, and they're like courage, honesty, savings, hard work. Mm -hmm. It's just a very very simple principles that we all learn from our parents, and we I tried to instill in my children, and I'm watching my daughter and son-in-law do that with their kids. Well, it's interesting and encouraging that not only are you trying to implement this program, but it's not gonna be taken only part of the way, just to the school or to the child, but actually you'll have something in place to take it to the families themselves. Yes, yes, because that's, again, back to my example about my own family and, and the influence of, of the outside forces. Uh, that family, while it's great to spend a lot of time helping a child, but if you don't, affect the family, that's where the, most of that decision making mm -hmm. uh, comes from, is from family values, whether they're good or bad.